Today we're going to take some inexpensive bladed tools and upgrade them into something you can be proud of. This is a highly functional $40 sword that I got from Amazon and the $30 axe I picked up from Home Depot. I typically use the sword to cut down brush and remove choya cactuses from my property. The length lets me avoid the spines and the sharpness results in nice clean cuts which allows me to then take these pieces and propagate them so that I can create a nice protective privacy hedge. From each cactus that I cut down, I'm able to create about seven to eight new ones. Plus, yard work is just more fun with a sword. Over the last two years, I've tried about eight to ten different swords or machetes off of Amazon. This is one of my favorites. It's got a really minimal design, and the steel is almost a quarter of an inch thick. It comes with a functional but unremarkable plastic sheath, and I like just about everything about it except for the handle, which is way too thin. So I unraveled the paracord that was wrapped around the handle and removed the tape underneath it. For the new handle, I'm going to use a scrap piece of an Ipe deck board. I used my table saw to cut a piece about an inch and a half wide, and then I split that piece into two scales that I'm going to epoxy on either side of the blade. I cleaned the Ipe and the blade really well with mineral spirits. Ipe has a ton of oil in it, and the blade had some residue from the tape that was on the handle. I'm using Gorilla two-part epoxy to glue the wood right to the steel. I mixed it really well and spread it on pretty thick. I was, however, careful not to let too much ooze out towards the blade because that would just be difficult to sand and clean up. I used spring clamps to hold it in place and let that epoxy cure for a few hours before taking my Ergo Kiwi knife and cutting away the squeeze out. I put a flush trim bit on my palm router and set the ball bearing so that they would touch the steel of the sword's handle. This allows me to cut the wood flush to the metal. Now that the first half has taken shape, I can glue on the second half. I trimmed the pieces down using my Japanese pull saw, and then routed the other side nice and flush. If you don't have a router, you could do this with a jigsaw and a sanding drum on a drill. Now I could just sand everything and keep it all nice and smooth and be good to go, but I want to do something a little more stylish. So I got my belt sander and I've started grinding down facets into the handle. I'm going for an asymmetrical geometric look and this little Ryobi belt sander is powerful enough to grind down not just the wood, but the steel as well. Once I got the rough shape using a 40 grit belt, I sanded these facets nice and smooth all the way up to 220 grit. I made sure to have a flat board behind the sandpaper. This is just going to help me keep the facets nice and sharp looking. When all the surfaces were smooth, I then gave a very light rounding over of the facets by hand. I love the way the handle looks, and at almost an inch thick, it's so much easier to get a good grip on. This idea for a faceted handle first came about when my buddy Dylan Grace was visiting, and we collaborated on a faceted concrete handle for a chef's knife. Be sure to check out his Instagram. He's a real knife maker. Not bad for under 50 bucks. We still have the axe to do, and along with some cut tests, but first, a word from our sponsor, Step 1. This video is sponsored by Step 1. Step 1 is my new go-to underwear brand for two main reasons, sustainability and comfort. The first thing I noticed when I received them was the minimal packaging that's also compostable. The fabric is made from organically grown and certified bamboo, which really helps on the sustainability front. They come in two different lengths, trunks, which are my preference, and boxer briefs, which have a slightly longer leg. There are three main reasons why these underwear are so comfortable. One, there's a 3D comfort pouch. There's a hidden piece of elastic around the pouch to surround you and your boys perfectly, keeping everything neatly in place. Secondly, on the inside of the thighs, there's ultra glide panels. These friction resistant panels come with anti-chafe technology so they prevent leg right up and stop those awkward moments of readjusting in public. And third is the super soft bamboo fabric. This organic material produced in a closed loop system wicks away sweat and moisture and allows you to breathe comfortably all day long. So click on the link in the description and get a pair for yourself. And don't forget to use my promo code. I also really like the way they look. 
my personal favorites are the Smoking Gun and Black Currents colors. But One Step has some brighter choices as well. Well, that was slightly awkward, but let's get back to the axe. This is just a basic $34 axe from Home Depot. They're a solid tool for the price, but it pays to be selective when picking one out. While the grain on the top axe looks nicer, I want the bottom one, because if the wood fails, it's going to split along these lines. Whereas the grain lines for this one are in the same direction as the axe head. But this isn't my area of expertise, so be sure to double check. I peeled off all the stickers and then started sanding off the epoxy finish that's over the top of both the wood and steel. It's a pretty thick finish, so I started with 80 grit sandpaper. Sanding isn't the most fun, so I always make sure to try to reduce the amount of time by picking out a solid sandpaper like 3M. Seriously, I've tried some cheap non-brand stuff and wasn't too happy with the results. It took about 7 minutes to get all the epoxy and markings off of the handle and the head, and then I switched to 120 and 150 grit to start smoothing everything out. The trickiest part is where the handle meets the head, because I don't really want to get deep scratches against the grain, so this was the most tedious part. I then moved up to 220 grit and really smoothed out the handle. There's only one edge on the axe that I want sharp, everything else I want pretty smooth to the touch. So I just ground down some of these sharp edges and corners with my Ryobi rotary tool. I also decided to grind away the black paint that is in the recesses right behind the blade. And this turned out to be a little trickier than I thought. The rotary tool is nice and precise, but if you want to get this done fast, a flat disc on an angle grinder really moves the metal. I then switched to my orbital sander and smoothed everything out all the way up to 220 grit. I've seen some really cool axe handles where they dip one end in like an epoxy paint. I wanted that two-tone aesthetic, but I wanted to do it with fire. So I used my benzomatic torch just to flame about one foot of the end of the handle. I'm trying to keep it just to the surface and move things around just so that I'm blacking it, but not actually burning all the way through. I then lightly sanded over the burnt part, being careful not to sand all the way through. I finished both the handle and the steel head with Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a plant-based oil and wax finish that works great on both steel, that works great on both metal and wood. I used a clean rag to apply a thick coat and then let it sit for about 10 minutes. I then looked for dry spots and added a little bit more, let that sit for 10 minutes, and then used a clean rag to rub it all out. Now are these examples of the finest crafted steel blades made by an expert blacksmith? Absolutely not. But they are functional tools that you don't have to treat like a priceless work of art. But not everything that's cheap has value. We've tried out so many of these Amazon swords and machetes, and most of them are straight garbage. And a lot of them have steel that's so thin after a few whacks they get bent. In addition to the sword that I found here, I did find a machete that I really liked. In fact, I liked it so much I even made a log splitting attachment for it. Look for the link in the description if you want to see that video. But after extensive Maker Ranch testing, this little katana is definitely my favorite. We have absolutely abused this thing over the last year, and it's still nice and straight. Coordination and experience do matter though, as my buddy Andrew Schultz found out when he was visiting Maker Ranch. Two hands or one hand? One hand. One hand. <laughs> Hold on. Luckily though, my little sister Jessie was there to show him how it's done. It's hard, no splitter even. Easy. 